Well, today I'll be demonstrating the Plan 9 operating system. Just going to show a quick session to give you an idea of what it's like to use. So here I am. I've started out with a blank draw term window. Now, draw term is a Linux or Windows or Mac OS program used to connect to Plan 9. And you just use it to connect to the server, which can be in your own room, elsewhere, across the country, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do a right click and hold it down, down the button. That brings up a context menu. Now I can select new, then right click and hold it while I sweep out to open a new window. Alright, now we get our little uh, prompt up here. So if I wanted to run a program like stats, I'd just type it in, give it a little few options, and run it. Starts up this graphical program. You'll notice, unlike Windows or Linux, rather than starting up a new window for the graphical program, it just takes over the current window. Now that's because every single window that you open multiplexes a drawing device so that it acts, it can take it over for itself. Let's see, let me close this. Now, the shell looks and feels in some ways similar to that of Unix. I can run LC, which is actually just LS, piped through MC. So you have a lot of the familiar commands. You might CD to bin, CD RC. All right, well, I don't have anything there. I just freshly installed this computer. But now, it feels like Unix in many ways, but it's different in quite a few others. Uh, you'll notice one thing that really stands out is the use of private namespaces. Now what that means is that remote file systems or other areas of file systems can be mounted onto the namespace of one process but not of another. This allows you to do some interesting things, among others mounting remote file systems locally without being the super user. In fact the super user's role in Plan 9 has been much diminished just by virtue of private namespaces. For instance, if I wanted to connect to Bell Labs server, which is called Sources, I would type 9fs sources. Now what this does is it's connected to the sources machine in Bell Labs and it's taken a file system which is being exported by sources and it's mounted it to my local namespace. So I can cd slash n slash sources and we'll see here that we have the contents of the remote directory displayed here. Now I can just treat this just like it was a normal local directory. I can cd contrib and so here's a bunch of files that have been contributed by other people so I could look at my own contrib directory. Okay, so one thing that's interesting about this is that whereas FTP requ requires a special client and you have to use the special FTP commands and everything like that, 9fs uh, just uses your regular shell commands because all it does is it makes a remote uh, file system look local. Alright, that's enough of that. Um, so another thing you can do, it uh, springs out of the private namespaces and it's kind of hard to explain just in a quick video like this, but uh, one, one effect is that when we connect to a remote system, I'm going to connect to Go, which is a Bell Labs machine. So I've connected and it automatically connected me, didn't ask for my password because I had previously connected to Go and given it my password. Now Plan 9 restores that in a program called Factotum, so you only need to type a password once. So now here I am on Go, I'm in a different directory, and I could do some stuff that uh, you might find a little unusual if you were using Linux. For example, I could just right away start up Rio, which is the window manager, and it's a little bit slow because it's going across this kind of slow internet link, but uh, I've started this window manager on the remote sh machine. It has no idea where I'm coming from. It doesn't really care. It just starts up Windows and treats it like normal. So you can do all your normal things out of here, but I tire of this. So let me close it by hitting delete, closing up there. And these uh, windows are pretty easy to manipulate. You can use the menu to resize, things like that, or move them about. However, you can also do more traditional methods of uh, managing it. For example, if you left click on the border, it'll stretch it out, or you can right click on the border to move it. Anyway, I'm going to start up the editor, which most people use, called Acme. Start that up, and 
takes over the current window. And what we see here is our, our bunch of tags. These are just plain text written up here in this uh, above these columns. And what it does is Acme can treat any string of text as a command. So if I wanted to open a new window, I would say I would middle click on new, which treats it as a command. That's opened a new window for me. I can type a bunch of stuff. And then when I'm tired of that, I can just middle click on delete to close that. Now if you right click, it does one of two things. If you right clicked on a file name, it'll open that file. If you right clicked on something else, it'll try to find further instances of that. For example, if I was to right click on that, it'll find further instances of TR. Okay. But if I wanted to open, for example, this code trfs.c, I just right click on that and it brings up trfs.c. I can scroll through it by pressing on the up and down arrows. I can edit it. Hi guys. If I wanted to save it, I click put. Or I could do more powerful things like editing the entire file, change all instances of include to foobar. And I hold down the middle button, sweep it all out, select it, and release. Let's change the in all instances of include to foobar. I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to undo it and close the window because I'm done. Oh, it's warned me because I tried to close a window which I made a modification to but I'm going to ignore that and try to close it again. This time it works. Now an interesting thing you can do with Acme, let me just bring that file back up to show it, is uh, mouse cording. Now mouse cording is used instead of the kind of laborious copy and paste that uh, you might be used to. Uh, so if you hold down the left mouse button and select some text, and then while you're still holding down the left mouse button, you middle click that'll cut, uh, cut out that piece of the file. Now if you then click again with the left mouse button holding it down and then press the right mouse button it'll paste again. So you could continue merrily pasting this wherever you wanted. It's kind of silly but you get the gist of it. And uh, this, is, this sort of thing is used throughout the system. For example if I was to open a new terminal LC now one thing about the terminal is that you can type wherever you want. So I'm going to say cat. I'll select that. Middle click to snarf it, which is the same as copying. It's just our silly uh, term we use. And then hold down the left mouse button and right click to paste it again. And now hit enter and it's showing me the file. I scroll down by pressing down the down arrow key. Alright, we've looked through the whole thing. Now, let me give a little example here of what you can do with Acme and just the programming system in general. I have a little program I wrote up called Snake. Now, I can compile it, snake.c, link it, and run it. Oh, yeah, I have a Snake game. Okay. Uh, now, you can do some interesting things because all these programs are linked together by what's called the plumber. So if I was to say B, which is just a shell script, snake.c, that sends a message to the plumber that I want to open the snake.c file. It finds out that the most appropriate program for that is Acme, and since Acme is already running, it just sends the file to Acme. And there we go. Now, say I was to go in here and make a error. So new f I'll change new food to new cat food. All right. So let me try compiling this. Ah, okay, we have a problem here. So let me, make, well, I'm going to click on that, middle click, select plum. That sends another plumber message to Acme to say highlight this, uh, this portion. Now what happens is that new food, it doesn't recognize that. There's a problem because I changed this to new cat food. So I'll fix that again, save it with put, and then I'm going to rerun the same program select it, middle click, select send, send it down, all right, relink it, and run it again. All right, so my snake game works again. All right, that's one thing you can do with editing. 
And I found that it's very powerful to write C programs and compile them and edit, edit them in Plan 9. It's really easy, and when I go back to Linux, I find myself kind of crippled by just the lack of Acme and the plumber and all such things. Now, it may be that you can do similar things with Emacs and get all fancy, but I've never learned those, and I find Acme to be a lot more useful to me. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about before I wrap this up is a, uh, the file systems that we use. Now, Plan 9 operates by having a kind of front-end file system called Fossil. So when you write a new file, it goes into Fossil, and uh, you can edit it, make changes. Then at about, sometimes it's 4 a.m., that's the usual time, the system takes everything new on Fossil and saves it to what's called Venti, which is the archival backup server. Now, Venti it does a blockwise backup using SHA-1 hashes of the all the data that's changed, but only the data that's changed. So if you have a big file and you append a little bit of data to the end, it'll only save again that data which you have changed. Now it's a little hard to understand, but just in general, Venti saves space by coalescing similar blocks. Now one thing you can do with this is, let me remember the syntax, 9fs dump will connect you to the Venti server, which in this case is running on the same box that I'm connected to right now. So now I can cd slash n slash dump. Now this is very freshly installed, so there's not too many days. Oop, made a mistake there, a little typo. There's not too many days, but if I say cd1120, that's November 20th, I am looking at the root of my file system as of November 20th. Now I can cd user, cd glenda, so, as of uh, 4 a.m. on November 20th, the only user on the system was called Glenda. Now, since then, I've gone ahead and created a new user called John for myself. But as of 11.20, this didn't exist yet. Now, so what this means is that, uh, to some extent, you can edit without fear. The worst thing you're ever going to do is wipe out your progress up until that day. Now, another interesting thing is that Fossil also keeps its own little backups you can access through 9fs snap. Fossil takes a snapshot every 15 minutes or so. So, ah, in this case, it's set up to take a snapshot every hour. So I'm going to cd to 1700. So that'd be about 5 o'clock. All right, we'll see there's a few more users here. Now, as of 5 o'clock, I, I didn't yet have for example, the p9demo.txt file, which is what I'm using to script this right now. Uh, and I didn't have the snake directory yet. And so you can see that it, it's uh, not really, it's really a editing without fear. You don't really have to worry about losing data. If you lose something, if you nuke something by mistake, if you accidentally remove your entire user directory, there's not really a problem. You can just get it back from the dump. Well, that's about all I'm going to show now. I'm running out of time, YouTube has a time limit, and I don't want to stretch this video for too long. Well, I hope this has been moderately informative, and you can check out my other videos, which are similar but don't have audio. Um, well, thank you for watching.